Syria, where he described in surprising detail the moment that he informed Chinese President Xi Jinping that the strikes would be taking place. I was sitting at the table, we had finished dinner, we're now having dessert, and we had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen, and President Xi was enjoying it. And I was given the message from the generals that the ships are locked and loaded, what do you do? And we made a determination to do it. Only Donald Trump could use a conversation about missile strikes in the Middle East to advertise the cake at Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> Which, by the way, you might want to think twice about trying, given that just this week it was reported the club's kitchen was cited for 13 health code violations <laughs> for, among other things, fish that had not undergone proper parasite destruction <laughs> and storing ham at 57 degrees. <laughs> because nothing says upscale dining like lukewarm ham with a side of tapeworm. And if you're thinking, well, hold on, perhaps the president brought up the cake because he wanted to be extra precise about every single detail. Well, let's rejoin that interview just one minute later. So what happens, as I said, we've just launched 59 missiles heading to Iraq. Well, you headed to Syria. Yes, heading toward <laughs> Syria. I honestly wish she just kept naming places to see if he kept agreeing with her. Headed to Egypt, yes, headed to Egypt. <laughs> Headed to Dollywood, yes, headed to Dollywood. <laughs> headed straight for us, yes, headed straight for us, right now. Now, as we mentioned last week, the bigger issue with Trump's sudden bombing of Syria is it runs directly counter to everything he'd said previously, through tweets like, what I, I, I am saying is stay out of Syria. But it turned out that was just a warm-up for a week full of foreign policy flip-flops. President Trump making a number of stunning reversals as he faces multiple foreign policy crises after repeatedly calling NATO obsolete on the campaign trail. NATO, in my opinion, is obsolete. Now, Mr. Trump changing his tone. I said it was obsolete. It's no longer obsolete. <laughs> it is incredibly annoying how long it took Donald Trump to reach a conclusion that everyone else had already reached. It's like a flat earther finally admitting the earth is round. Yes, you are finally right, but I'm still mad at you that you ever believed that shit in the first place. <laughs> and that's just the beginning. He also U-turned on calling China a currency manipulator, replacing Fed Chair Janet Yellen and his criticisms of the Export-Import Bank. And you may be happy with those reversals, but if you are a Trump supporter, you might be rightly pissed off. This is not what you thought you bought. It's like getting tickets for the vagina monologues, but on the night you went, it starred Brian Dennehy. <laughs> who's great, no, don't get me wrong, but it's not really what you signed up for. <laughs> and sometimes Trump's 180s seem to happen in real time. For instance, his long-standing belief that North Korea could easily be taken care of by China apparently changed moments after he brought it up to Xi Jinping. Mr. Xi then explained the history of China and Korea, Mr. Trump said. After listening for 10 minutes, he said, I realize it's not so easy. <laughs> Xi Jinping got him to completely change his mind after just 10 minutes. And how did he even explain something that complicated in so short a time? I genuinely want to know that. Because if this show did a segment on grapes, we'd need 20 minutes and an appearance from a marching band. 